7.35, good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne on your TV, on your radio and online. Let's take a look at today's front pages now. And the Mail says we are braced for dangerous weather... Ph- oh, sorry, a dangerous weather phenomenon known as the Sting Jet, which is apparently a narrow-focused region of extre- exceptionally strong wind. I haven't got my teeth in this morning. <laughs> uh, well, this week I shall mostly be staying in bed... That's uh, a good headline. Stark it is. Yeah, not a bad idea. There, as the star says, as the storm could last for days. The Sun, meanwhile, calls it a killer storm. Uh, as the Met Office says, there's a significant danger to life. Troops are on standby, apparently, to aid rescue efforts. Well, away from the storm, the Daily Mirror has found that thousands of vulnerable care home residents have been forced out of private care homes. To Ukraine and Russia, tensions in the Telegraph, which says that Russia has begun false flag attacks after an attack on a nursery in a Ukraine village. And in the Financial Times this morning, it says President Biden has warned allies that Russian troops could launch an assault within days. So time to go through the insides of the papers now. Joining us this morning, journalist Mike Parry and broadcaster Liz Kershaw. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, Mike, you're starting off with the post office, and this yes. is a scandal uh, uh, that I cannot believe we're not up in arms about. I, I, I totally agree. It, this is one of the greatest scandals of our age, OK? 700 cases of postmaster stroke mistresses being accused of robbing the post office for huge amounts of money, some up to £200,000. Now, a lady who was in charge of the post office a lot of that time was Paula Venels, OK? I make no judgment on that because there's an inquiry going on at the moment into the whole horrible fiasco. But what I would say is this. When we all grew up, didn't we think the post office was the safest yes. building in the village, the safest yeah. building yes. in town? Yeah, yeah. It had a big red letterbox outside it. And the person inside the post office was usually uh, a middle-aged man or a middle-aged lady who were a friend to you yeah. as well as serving behind the counter. You knew everybody and everything. Knew everybody, did everything, helped you with yeah. your parcels, passed them through the window, run down the road after the postman, take this letter yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So the point I'm making here is how could anybody who was in charge of the post Post office, see all these cases mounting up because the computer had gone wrong and not work out, hang on, mm. how come we've suddenly got 700 crooked, crooked postmasters, postmistresses, mm. without somebody turning around with a bit of common sense in the head and saying, no, actually, postmasters and postmistresses don't do that. They're not dishonest. They're the salt of the community. And, and what was even worse is not only did they not join up the thinking on that, but they deliberately kept each individual they did. postmaster and mistress in the dark about the fact that it was happening uh, to anyone else. They did. They, when, they, when they accused somebody, they didn't say, oh, don't worry, you're not on your own, because as you quite rightly say, that was a a pattern. These individual people were so shocked at their integrity and their honesty being challenged, mm. some of them have committed suicide. Many hundreds of them have lost their lives, their homes, their, their reputation. I saw one lady talking only last night, even though she's now been cleared, within her own community, 50% of the people that used to be her customers shun her still in the street because well, you know they're say, not convinced that, well, you know, there wasn't something it, going it's on. It's the whole no smoke without yeah. fire attitude. Absolutely. Isn't it? And it's this hori- it was the horizon system. Yes. And, and there's, I mean, there's an argument to say the post office knew it wasn't working properly actually before any of these cases were brought Yes, that's absolutely right. I saw that suggested the other evening that, that somebody at the top knew mm. it was a computer thing and just carried on covering yeah. it up. Yeah. But some people easier. were sent to jail. People have served time, yeah. men, yeah. women. As Mike says, there have been suicides, there have been deaths because yeah. people have just, you know... Just wasted away. Just, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, 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 it's terrible, it really is. They, they yeah. were the most honest members of our communities, yeah. weren't they? That's the way we looked. Yeah. And that's why we went and bought our stamps to put a stamp on your mum's birthday yeah. card. Those were the sort of people, they were always there for us. I can't yeah. believe why we're not making more of it. Well, no. I'm making more of it. And yeah, I wish other people would, in, you know, would join me in my rage for the well, terrible, the terrible... The whole post office thing, though, it's yeah. so badly run. I mean, it look at now. the way. There's a post office near me, and it's one of the crown buildings, you know, sort of built in the 50s. Yeah. It, it had um, mahogany counters and brass rails and all that. Beautiful. Now, now you can go in it to collect a parcel, but it's got a big sign up saying, mm. this is not a post office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh. mean, how ridiculous. Meanwhile, the post office is now right at the back of a spa shop. Oh. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's all plastic, and you have to go past all the cornflakes to find it. it. It's what well, It's been so badly managed. Oh, it's, yeah. it's shocking. My, my local one is now in the back of W.H. Smith's, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't even find it. Yeah. You know, you've got to get past Punch yeah. magazine and the time. 
times before uh, you find the post office. Mine's is an off licence. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't object to that. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Liz, to the Times, being an MP is not a dream job. Yeah, well, this is in the same category, isn't it? Who wants to be a post office, a postmaster or mistress now? Mm. The, the risks are horrendous, or they have been. Mm. Same thing with MPs. So, um, I used to think I'd love to be an MP. In fact, I was approached once. I was at an MP's flat in Westminster. Yeah. And I stepped yeah. out onto the balcony. I was approached by a figure out of the shadows saying, would you like to be an MP? Mm. And I said, I'd love to, but not while I've got kids at school. Mm. And I thought, when I got to my stage of life, I'd love it. But I, I'm not so sure now. And um, a YouGov poll for time, the Times found that just 7% of people wanted to be a Member of Parliament very mm. much. Mm. Mm. And I think, um, obviously, the death of two MPs and the stabbing of a, a third one just before that won't have helped. Um, you get so much abuse now, don't you? And you're mm. an actual physical threat or assault. Um, and I've never thought it was a good job for somebody who's so far for, away from home. It's mm. terrible for anybody with a family, but especially a woman with young kids. Mm. Um, it's such an antisocial lifestyle. Oh, oh, it you, is. I think more could be done to make it... I mean, it's no wonder MPs still want to stay at home, is it, um, yeah. after two years of mm. being I, I on actually, Skype? I actually disagree with you, Liz, on this. Not much I disagree with you on, but a bloke knocked on my door once, you know, and he was campaigning. He was the local MP candidate. And I said, why should I vote for you? He said, I will make your life better. And I said, no, 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 you've got it the other way round, mate. You've got it the wrong way round. If I vote for you, I make your life better. You go to the House of Commons, you get 200000 a year when you add up all your expenses and the housing allowances you get, right? You get long holidays in the summer no. and you swan around in one of the most privileged clubs, i.e. the House of Commons, in history. Now, obviously, there's a few down uh, parts to being an MP, but mostly speaking, you are up there and you're coining it in oh, no. and you're oh, given you're respect no, by no, the no, community. No, no. Most, most so. people in Parliament... Yeah could earn, a, a lot of them could earn oh, more Oh, a lot of them outside. couldn't. A lot of them couldn't earn the job as running a wealth right, stall okay. on South End Pier, to be right. honest. A lot of them could earn more. And, a, and, and if, you know, I, I, I don't think that for the hours per hour, yeah. you know, they're, they're on less than the guy who comes to fix my dishwasher. So I, I think that mm. to attract the calibre of person, you need to pay well and you need to get the conditions right. Yeah. I don't like all the 650 of them, obviously, mm. but I, I don't think... I can understand why people don't think it's the first choice for a career mm. when yeah. they could be making a fortune being a barrister or... They make a lot of money, doctor. MPs. Well, well you never see an MP in a small house, do you? Hmm? Well, Seriously. no, I would disagree. I mean, they, I mean, they, they get, what is it, 80 grand they're on? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that is a lot of money, but it's not the 200 grand and all that business. Oh, oh no, they do. You look no, at their expenses, don't. you look at their housing allowance. Yeah, they don't, because all that goes through IPSA and everything. Uh, exactly. Yeah, so they, all... they employ their own wives and children in their, in well, their offices, and Some they get do. paid for that. And then on top of all that, of course, we see them taking a few quid here and there, lobbying for companies and all that. It's, you know, I, I you don't feel sorry for any MP. You can't tie them all with the same brush. Well, However, well. let's talk about what happens to your brain at 60. Mm. A bit worried about this. Yeah, right. Now, a person's mind is sharp as ever until the age of 60. A study suggests, um, earlier research had said that the brain slowed down uh, after the age of 20. Now, I'm not sure I believe this because I think, and millions of people out there will disagree, I got sharper after 60, not before 60. Because really? my life was too cluttered before the age of 60. And there were two... <laughs> Stephen, see, that's not very kind, is it? It's not kind. To burst no. out laughing. I'm not, being, I tell you that I'm I'm not being kind. I'm not a kind person. Yeah. No, <laughs> not yeah, yeah. But I found, actually, that I was more focused after the age of 60. So perhaps it was the fact that I'd finished paying the mortgages. Perhaps it was the fact yeah. that I didn't have to count out to my bosses as much as I used to because the job wasn't that important for that much longer, that sort of thing. And I became absolutely... Focused, almost a different person. I started saying no a lot, you know, and I yeah. started yeah. picking and Not choosing what? what I wanted to do. Well, you know, whatever I, I really I did. I started oh. saying no a lot. <laughs> Can I just say, I was, <laughs> at, <laughs> oh, I was, at, I was at this Kershaw's 60th birthday party. Oh, wasn't oh right, okay. Okay. She, she wasn't very sharp by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe no, that. But the, this, the article, it's in mm. all the papers and they have a different slant on it. The yeah. article's saying you don't lose your brain faculty after 60. Yeah. And we can be reassured. Yes. But it just, it, they were measuring reaction time and it just, you, you've got the same amount of ability and capacity to process information and you're a shot. It's just that the older brain 
is more con more considered. So mm. if you're given a choice of buttons to press, the mm. older brain will take a fraction, a millisecond yeah. longer yeah. to make the right decision. So it's all about wisdom. But I think every morning I do, I, we do the, in our hours, we do all the quizzes, the telegraph quiz, the times oh, right. quizzes, the yeah. word puzzles. And I think, um, you know, it exercise your brain. Oh, you have got and to it, exercise yeah. your brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. do. You you're definitely more measured in your responses, I agree. You know, when, when we were in the height of our careers in the middle of a newsroom and somebody said something, you'd snap back instantly and then by tomorrow morning's paper you realise you'd made completely the wrong decision. But you had to get it in first, you know what I mean? It's that sort of attitude, really. You're going to slow down a bit as you get older. I mean, that's just natural. Well, well there you are, Stephen. When you get to 60, you'll learn how to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Or yes to the odd, odd cocktail, which <laughs> slows down your brain. True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm very different to how I was when I was in my twenties. Yeah. Well, I think. No, every, no we're all. We are. Everybody are. does. Yeah. 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 But but wisdom can only come with age, can't it? I mean, that's a fact of life. And experience. You're, yeah. You're wiser at sixty yeah. than you were at thirty, so to speak. Yeah. 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 All thirty. I do better mm. at quizzes where I can take a bit of time to think about. Yes. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which our university challenge. I'm always pressing the. the Pause, pause, yeah, hang on, on a minute, hang on a minute, well, I'll, get it, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, I can never get a question on university challenge. I can, but sometimes it takes quite a little while to Love get it. Um, have we got time to talk about working from home, Liz? Well, very quickly, it's just yeah. to say that um, most of the country, and I noticed this when, when I was up in the northwest last weekend, mm. Mm. is, you know, back on the roads, everywhere's packed, back to yeah. work, yeah. queuing buses, everything. Yeah. Um, in London, however, just 18 to 20% of people... Outrageous. Um, and it's because the people working in, say, the city, for example, are more highly paid office staff and they can work from their home office or kitchen. Oh, exactly. And also, there, there, a lot of people choosing to retire, same in mm. the United States, just dropping out of the workforce. So big city firms mm. are, are having to give them all sorts of sweeteners just to keep them working for them. And one of them, of course, is, yes, yeah, she can still yeah. work but it's, it's, it's an outrage, yeah. isn't it? But it's, it's the different... It's, apparently, it's different here than it mm. is in the rest of the country. I haven't wandered around Bishopsgate or Liverpool Street recently, but oh, I it's have. quite stark. Oh, I apparently. have. It's oh. absolutely deserted. I went down right. Cheapside the other day, you know, behind um, St Paul's Church mm. uh, from Ooh. one location to another. It is absolutely deserted. Mm. And we, we all work in a creative industry called the media, don't we? How could we possibly work from home all the time? If I didn't bump into you in the corridor and say, hey, Andy, did you see that on the television last night? You'd say something which would then spark an idea in me, and I go and tell Liz, hey, what do you think about that? And I go to Stephen and say, can oh. we find somebody to but do I do, this? I do worry about people's, because there are so many IT companies starting up now, yeah. and young people particularly working yes. in IT, yeah. and they are being um, persuaded to work from home a lot. Yeah. And they don't oh. make I'm not sure friends. it's very good no. for them. They don't make friends. I mean, it's, I can't yeah. remember the stat, but it, it's so many people, so many of us... I've met a partner at work, Absolutely. haven't we? You know, mm. it's, it, you get office romances, and uh, that's not happening anymore, mm. no. is it? No, no definitely I not. Interviewed, I interviewed, oh. I've been doing a lot of interviews from home, and the technology is amazing. So yesterday, interviewing somebody in Miami, I'm in Northamptonshire, the producer's in London, this other guy from the BBC is in Bristol. It, mm. The technology, and it was Andy Bell from Erasure. Oh, Andy mm. Bell, Yeah, right. lovely mm. guy. He says going to swing by, so he'll come round when he does. Oh, right. Because you're a fan of Eurasia. Yeah. Is, well, back in the day, they were amazing. <laughs> but we're almost out of time, Liz. Yeah. I just want to very quickly look at the sun and Ronaldo. Oh, mm. yes. Well, Ronaldo, who thought this got another string to his bow or brow, oh, mm. is opening um, or uh, expanding um, his hair replacement clinics. Oh, amazing. No, he had any. No, he has. He's, he's yeah. got a few, but he's, he's going global with it. So, do you think oh. he's had it done? Um, well, he probably, well, he he probably has. It yeah. wouldn't be any shame if he had. Wayne Rooney was the first um, footballer to admit, yeah. I've had my hair yeah. done. Yeah. And, it's very and, effective now. I mean, he put, the he one put a picture of it on his own tell. Twitter account. He yeah. said, hey, oh, you'll want to see it. And he can't he, tell. He, um, <laughs> Wayne I, had, I had mine done about 18 months ago. Yeah. Well, and I, had a big, I had a big widow's peak and yeah. it was going on the middle there. Yeah. But you shouldn't call it transplant because you just take a bit out the back and rearrange it. Yeah. Well, I, went to rearrange I, it. I always say, what do you think? I always say, Prince... Princess Diana was still alive. Prince William would have a full head of hair. Oh, mm. yeah. could well yeah. be. Harry. I went to Wayne Rooney's oh, clinic in Harley thing. Street and asked for a, you know, a consultation. They told me not to bother. Why? Why? Well, it, it, it wasn't going to work without extensive treatment. They said. Oh, yeah. Just stand I mean, on, just yeah. stand on your head, and then you'll have a, a beard on yeah. top and yeah. the other bit. Good thinking, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> 
practical <laughs> northern suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mine only took a day. It took a day. Mm. Yeah. That's it. I had a bit brilliant. of recovery time. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but I felt fine. It didn't hurt nothing. It was great. Right. No, I think mm. it's, I yeah, think it's really, really, yeah, really Jimmy is. Nesbitt had one done, didn't he? It was quite spectacularly good. Well, well Elton actor. John was the yeah. most famous one yeah. first, wasn't yeah. he, really? But he complained about his... Didn't well, he? he had about three goals at it, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, but, uh, but it never succeeded for Elton. No, no he had about three attempts. Yeah. Yeah. He kept falling yeah. out, apparently. He's still got a syrup. Still got a syrup on. Mm. Has he? Anyway, well, we've got an MP way. 